Come Thanksgiving time, I'm kind of giving your whole forecast away <laughs> with this one, Matt, but it's something we definitely need to keep in mind going forward. Yeah, absolutely, and, and we're going to talk all about that. I do want to start with this, though. I teased this before the break, and I teased it a little bit about at 6 o'clock. I told you, winter is closer than you might think, and why I said that is this. So we always think of astronomical winter. We always look on the calendar. It's right around the winter solstice there on December 21st this year, but we actually have two types of winter to talk about. The first is what we call meteorological winter. That actually starts on December 1st and encompasses the months of December, January, and February. Astronomical winter, of course, starts on the solstice and runs through the spring equinox basically at the end of March. So again, astronomical seasons are based on the Earth's position position relative to the sun, the angle at which the earth is facing at the sun. Meteorological seasons are based on temperature cycles. It's simple. December, January and February are our coldest months. Ergo, meteorological winter. So that's why I say it's closer than you think. In fact, our meteorological winter starts just about a week from now. So why are we talking about this? Because the Climate Prediction Center did release their winter outlook for this year, and I wanted to go over that with you real quick. We've been talking for a while about how it's a La Nina year. That typically means that we're going to be above average in terms of temperature and below average in terms of our precipitation. Right now, the outlook is bearing that out. The data tells us that we have very high odds of being below average for precipitation. And for the record, December, January and February, 8.14, a little over eight inches of rain expected over the uh, months of December, January and February. The odds are very high. That that we'll look back on March 1st and we will not have reached that 8.14 inches. The data also showing us that we have relatively high odds to be above average. Now, here's the thing. What does this not mean? This does not mean that we won't have cold snaps. It does not mean that we won't have chilly days. It just means that we will likely have fewer than usual and we'll look back on March 1st, average all 90 days together, and we'll be a little bit warmer than that average high of 60.8. I'm not saying it won't be cold. I'm just saying there will be probably fewer days this year where we have that chill in the air than what we see on a normal day. For today, above average. And yeah, that reads in really nicely. 81 out there today for your high. We uh, should be right around 67 degrees. Right now we're falling into the 50s across the area. Still waiting on that cold front. You can see the winds not really picking up just yet, but that is on the way. Take a look here. Our <clears throat> excuse me, our cold front comes through in the overnight hours. We'll kick those wind gusts up to about 20 to 25 miles per hour, and we're going to hold on to those into tomorrow morning, into tomorrow afternoon. So it's going to be a pretty breezy day. Factor that in with the fact that we're going to be about 10 degrees cooler and yeah, it's probably going to feel pretty chilly out there tomorrow for the morning. We'll wake up right around the uh, mid 40s across the area with the winds. It'll probably feel a little bit cooler than that. Wind chill values probably around 40 degrees, maybe some 30s there in terms of what it'll feel like when you wake up tomorrow afternoon right there in the mid and lower 60s across the area. So again, about 10 15 degrees cooler than it was today. Next three days we do start a warming trend, but then as we head into Thanksgiving, yeah, we're going to be above average average to start the week, but I've got another cold front right around Thanksgiving that'll cool us off again for the holiday and maybe bring a chance for rain. If you want to get your forecast on your own time, you can download our free six plus app that's on Fire TV, Apple TV and your Roku device.